Blockchain really is a shared ledger. There's three parts of the components. Shared ledger, it facilitates data being transformed or, or translated that into their business network, okay? Why is blockchain called blockchain? Because that data is blocked, it's blocked data that goes across into your network and then is chained to the other distributed parts of the system. Today, when you look at your business networks and you can examine those and figure those out yourself, are they really the way they should be? Are they really efficient? Have they gotten to a point where, okay, our business networks, we're talking and communicating and going back and forth and collaborating. Seriously, think about it. Are you really doing that? Is that really happening for you? Blockchain can make that speed up. Blockchain can make a difference. And we all know that wealth across the globe, society, et cetera, is really kind of generated by transferring of assets back and forth and how efficient that is. That's another key component of blockchain. And the way we divide our markets up within IBM, we say, okay, it, there's two basic huge markets. One's the public, like an auction, and the other one is private, which would be kind of like a supply chain financing or bonds, et cetera. So most people know what Bitcoin is, right? That was really the first well-known application for blockchain. Blockchain underpins Bitcoin. The thing about Bitcoin is it's really resource intensive. It takes a lot of computing power to process the cryptocurrency. And if you do Bitcoin mining, there's a race to the top and how to do that faster because you can earn Bitcoin, right? So that's really taking a tax on this approach. The blockchain is an identity. We know who's in this blockchain. We know who's going to the shared ledger and changing transactions. With Bitcoin, do you really know who you're dealing with? You know, it's anonymous. With blockchain too, we, you've already selected people to be a part of that blockchain. Whereas with Bitcoin, you get notification of a transaction. Also, we focus really on the assets and transfer of assets versus a currency or cryptocurrency. Here's the problem, I talked about it earlier. When you look at your business networks, they're scattered, they're all over the place, there's a lot of different applications, there's people going back and forth with invoices or letter of credit, all sorts of documentation. It, it's kind of like, and this is really a clean kind of slide, in reality it should be like spaghetti thrown up against the wall. Because all these different connections are going back and forth. How do we know the efficiency of it? We were heard earlier today at Boeing, we've got to figure out where our parts are, who makes the best parts, and why they're defective. We heard about Monsanto, about seeds. You know, what, what are you doing with seeds? And are these seeds going to come up? Blockchain can really make that difference. And you see all these different type of participants in your best business network that all have their own ledgers. The key thing about blockchain is it's a shared ledger. So when you leave today, and you think about it, three parts I want you to take home with. Shared ledger, data's transferred to your business network. Below it says inefficient, expensive. We all know that. We already know that. We live that right now today with our systems. This is like an ideal situation within your blockchain supply chain. It's shared, it's replicated. There's a permission ledger there so that you can go back and forth and everybody's working on that ledger at the same time. You, know, you see these records pass from, say, a regulator to an auditor, et cetera. And below here, consensus, provenance, immutability, and finality are the four key tenets of what blockchain is. And so let me explain that in English, okay? I know there's a lot of smart people here, but consensus, of course, is everybody's agreeing on it, right? <coughs> provenance is the origin of it. Immutability is you can't change it, sorry. If you go into blockchain and you want to make a change, it's got to be done by consensus. Finality is it's one, one source of truth. I talked earlier about a shared ledger, and it's kind of basic. The components are there. You know, okay, records go through this business network through this shared ledger, but it's between participants you've decided to be a part of. You own, they all own a copy, but it's really through that replication part that you own a copy. 
It's permission. So you have to say, okay, we're allowing, say Monsanto wants to have ADM in their blockchain. They have to say, okay, we're allowing you to be a part of this blockchain. And this really is the future of system of records. These four areas focus on the requirements for blockchain and business. I've talked about shared ledger, smart contract, which is another component that we have within our IBM blockchain. And that really is the business rules that you set up within your blockchain with your partners. And it comes in the form of a contract. Privacy is incredible. Cryptography, encryption, state-of-the-art, everybody shares keys. You have to be assigned and a lot of keys. You control those keys when you let somebody in. It's authentic, it's verifiable, etc. Trust, everybody knows within the blockchain who they're dealing with. So there's no question about the trust factor. Why is this relevant to our business? We at IBM identified four areas for use cases, four areas that you can focus on now, today, and look at within inside your company. I'll start at the top and go down. Really, it's the, when you look at the high value market, that's really you're talking about you know, financial organizations, companies specific to the finance side, but that could also be, say, you know, your audit department within, say, a Monsanto or a Boeing, et cetera. Asset exchange, that typically, again, goes to say at Edward Jones. You're dealing with dividend, notification, etc. Consortium shared ledger, that's perfect for food safety, food chain, supply chain, when you get a group together, do a consortium, and it's really exciting. Then compliance, again, goes into audit risk, that might be your Deloitte's of the world, that would then leverage that, that use case.